Hey guys, just wanted to let you know that my Discord server has finally gone public. Feel free to join in the link down below. What is up, Erect Molts? Happy Monday, and welcome back to another Modern Monday gameplay video. Today, we're taking a look at a Heliod Martyr proc list that Bobo C. Tiberius took to a 5 0 finish in an MTGO Modern League. Now, we've played Soul Sisters on the channel many times, but we never actually played its cousin deck, Martyr proc, so I'm super excited for this one. Martyr proc is known to be a deck that is one of the grindiest decks ever in modern history. It can grind to the end of eternity and back. It just like hardly ever runs out of gas. It's got hardly any bad top decks. So this game can go long. So I apologize in advance if today's video doesn't have a lot of games in it because they might be pretty long. Um, but anyways, this deck makes use of the Heliod Ballista combo as lots of decks are nowadays. Uh, but the cool thing about this version is because the modern proc decks usually already run Ranger of Eos and Ranger Captain of Eos, and both of those creatures have the ability to go tutor out your Walking Ballista for your combo. So it's like you have nine copies of Walking Ballista in here, which is going to make this probably the scariest version of Martyr proc I've ever seen. So we're going to try it out and see how good it is. So as always, if you want to play today's deck along with us, you can sign up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck on Magic Online and try it out for yourself, as well as any future decks we play on the channel. And if you wanted to try today's deck in paper, consider buying through our decklist link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And of course, special thanks to all my patrons who've been scrolling down at the bottom of the screen this whole time. It is because of you guys this channel is possible, so thank you very much for your support. Support. And with that, let's jump right into the deck tech followed by the gameplay. Hope you enjoy. So the martyr part of martyr proc comes from martyr of the sands, which you can crack it and reveal any number of white cards from your hand to gain three times that much life. That's going to be a lot of life, getting you to the point where you're over 30 so that it activates Sarah Sanded to get plus five plus five and flying. So that it turns into a one mana six six flying lifelink, which is pretty dang efficient. And then Pro proclamation of rebirth can reanimate these guys. And with that forecast ability, uh, you just start having infinite grind value in the late game and you just never run out of things to do. You can gain a billion life over and over again with uh, Martyr of the Sands so long as your hand is full of white cards. And so that's the grind ability of this deck. It's really quite amazing. And the cool thing about Saracen and Martyr, you can go fetch them out with things like Ranger Captain of Eos and Ranger of Eos, which go and tutor a creature with CMC one or less and put it right into your hand. And that also fills up your hand for a future Martyr of the Sands. And you can get all of those Saracenants once you're over 30 life and just produce all of the one mana 6-6 six, six flying lifelinks. And the cool thing about these is that they also find Walking Ballista as I went over the intro, but just in case you skipped it, I'll go over it again. So it's pretty much like we have nine copies of Walking Ballista in here. So if you are fresh new to Magic the Gathering, I've never seen this combo before, I will go over it. So Heliod, whenever you gain a life, you put a counter on a creature you control. You can also give a creature a lifelink with it. So you're going to give the Walking Ballista lifelink. It's going to remove a counter to ping the opponent's face. And you're going to gain a life because a lifelink, that's going to trigger the ability to get a counter back on it. So that in turn equals infinite damage. Having access to this in this deck is awesome for the late game grind, knowing that we always have an out at all times. Let's move on to our big control package. Gideon is there to prevent some damage and also give you an emblem that says that combo decks can't kill you unless they deal with Gideon first. And we got some board wipes, which really don't hurt us that much, especially because we have a, like Ranger of Eoses and Proclamation of Rebirths and a lot of grind value. And also Gideon himself doesn't die, Heliod doesn't die. Um, so we can freely wrath the board. Cleansing Nova, though, also has the ability to destroy all artifacts and enchantments, which is pretty good against the Urza decks, I guess, if you need to blow up all the artifacts and, and just randomly decent against Boggles, but you can just destroy all creatures anyways. Uh, but we have some more removal in Path to Exile and Winds of Abandon as our exile effects, and Generous Gift can, can straight up destroy target permanent. They get an elephant token, but we really don't care about that. But the cool thing about it destroying target permanent is it can also blow up lands. And that's a nice grind piece as well for blowing up lands because we also have the Crucible of Worlds in here as a singleton to pair with Field of Ruin and Ghost Quarter. So in the late game, if we have the Crucible, we start recurring Ghost Quarter, Field of Ruin, we can just start blowing up all of our opponent's lands to the point where they run out of basics and eventually have nothing to fetch out, giving us a lot more mana and things to do with Proclamation of Rebirth in the late game. And there you go. 
We got a total of 24 lands, and we do have a lot of grindability in the mana base as well, like Ms. Velplains to buy stuff back, like, so we don't ever get milled out if that's a thing that's gonna happen. Amiria the Sky Ruin to start reanimating creatures if we got seven planes, if our graveyard isn't gone at that point. We had a, a full playset of Flagstones of Trocare to thin the deck. Also, if the opponent's trying to blow up our lands, that's there as well. And we got a copy of Blast Zone as well to blow up some problematic permanents. So let's move on to the sideboard. We got a couple copies of Damping Sphere against Combo, a couple copies of Rune Halo, also decent against Combo decks that have like one win con, you name it, and then you have protection from it. And we got three copies of Rest in Peace to hit those graveyards because that is relevant right now in Modern. A lot of graveyard decks and Dredge. We got one copy of Hex Parasite to destroy Planeswalkers, two copies of Stony Silence against artifact-based decks like Urza decks, although if they have the Urza, they can get around it. We got two copies of Ghostly Prison if we're going up against Hyper Aggro and attacking decks so that we have all the time to set up our Martyr of Sands to get over 30 life. We got one copy of Avacyn, Angel of Hope, or not Angel of Hope, but the Archangel Avacyn to give our creatures a destructible when it enters. So good to phase a removal spell against a control deck or just turn it into a six power dude if the opponent is trying to remove our stuff. We got one copy of Sorcerer Spyglass to name Planeswalkers. And then we got one copy of Sun Titan and the especially grindy matchups. We can start reanimating our things like Ghost Quarters and Field of Ruins and our Sarah Ascendants back in the graveyard if it is a very mid-range matchup. So that's about it. I'll get the stream started and I'll see you in the first round. Got a game here against Thy Shuffler. And we're going to be on the play with some Soul Sisters. Or not some, some uh, Martyr Proc. And that looks like it's going to be a keep. I can uh, proc this Sarah Ascendant on turn two. I don't have a second white source, unfortunately. Oh, but yeah, it doesn't look like it matters. It doesn't look like it matters. Because I can do it off a of colorless source. So we've actually played against Thy Shuffler a few times before. So I don't know if Thy Shuffler is somebody who is currently in the chat. I don't see them. All right, Misty Rainforest for a forest. Bird. Elvish Mystic. Ooh, I'm not going to reveal Blast Zone yet. Um, yeah, I can go to 32 here. Let's attack with Martyr. We're taking it. Tracking Martyr. Revealing 4. Going up to 32. Playing a Sarah Ascendant. And now Ranger Captain of Eos and Ranger of Eos can go just find more Sarah Ascendants. What deck plays Misty Rainforest and Elvish Mystic? I don't know what this could be. Maybe it's like some kind of Prime Speaker Vanifair deck. Green White. So it's banned. It's definitely banned, but they need a lot of mana dorks for something. It's like they're trying to get something out on turn two. It might be the Bant Constable. Bant Constable Company. Land Please isn't there. Yeah, I, I deleted some of the old emotes to add some new ones, and I, I, I do want to get one more emote made. Okay, it's obviously elves. And I did get a plane, so that's great. Lettuce, go to combat and swing for six in the air. Well, yeah, I'm going to catch them off guard with this, uh, with this blast zone. That's the plan. So let's go Ranger Captain of Eos. Let's go grab another Sarah Ascendant. I could have also Ghost Quartered their Temple Garden there. Ella Domri's call. Oops, are we dying here? Oh, is this a Kiki? Um, Bogart, Bogart Kiki combo? Devoted Druid. Go get a Sarah Ascendant. You know, I probably should have actually gotten Walking Ballista. That would have made a lot more sense. Okay, since since they have uh, Pendlehaven and Land of Worlds and Elvish Mystic, that tells me this is probably a Zuri combo, not Druid Vizier. Uh. Um. Like, I want to crack Blast Zone, but do I? Not sure. Just go to combat. Land 
Swing for six. All right, they're going to one here. Is it in my best interest to, to crack this blast zone right now? I really don't know, dude. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna actually feel to ruin their white source. If they have court of calling, they can still get around this. They have another Eladomris. Are are they getting the Vizier? They got the Vizier. Do they have a basic planes though? Basic forest. All right. All right, all right. Do you have a fetch land? Don't tell me you have a fetch land. No fetch land? Oh man, we got so lucky. We got so lucky. All right, well, Sorcerer's Spyglass. Um, probably. Um, that's it. Just Sorcerer's Spyglass. And what are we cutting? We need all the removal. I guess we're, we don't need Crucible. This is not going to be a grindy matchup. This is going to be a quick matchup. All right, Crucible it is. Do it. Blast Zone hurts you more than them? Yeah, probably. That's why I didn't do it. Because I needed my attacker in the air. They dropped Finks. What was I going to do? Okay, Generous Gift, Proc of Rebirth. I don't know if this will do it. It's a little slow. But I guess, like, this, this deck doesn't get any quicker. It really doesn't. This deck is slow. Ooh, that's a good draw. If I draw one more white, if I draw one more white card... I can get above where I need to be. Um, I can get to 32, and then I can play the Ranger Captain Vios and go and find the Sarah Ascendant. They be shocking. There's a Druid. All right, well, I wish I could Generous Gift here, but I can't. So let's see if we're dead. Yep, they got the combo, but do they have the sync is the question. Show me that sync. Show me that faucet. Do you have Duskwatch Recruiter? Do you have Ballista? Do you have uh, Leyline of Abundance? What is it? There's Azuri and that's game. So I told you it was a Azuri combo. That's why they had El Elvish Mystic and Llanowar Elves. Because they had a Azuri combo. So it's definitely the uh, Leyline of Abundance deck. Yeah. It's definitely the Leyline of Abundance deck. Gotta run this right back. All right, we need all our Path to Exiles and stuff. Doesn't have mana, so it's Mulligan. It's got a path, so I'm keeping it. Got to keep any, any hand that has a path. Now I just need something to do. I just need a Ranger of Eos or something. A Ballista would be epic in this matchup. It'd be so good. 
So if I get a Ranger of Eos or whatever, I'm instantly getting a Ballista. Ooh, Wrath. That's amazing. They're shocking. Devoted Druid, sure. So they could cord and catch me off guard, but I'm not going to path yet. I'm going to wait. I am going to wait. If they play a Vizier, I'll path the Druid in response. But I'm only going to do what I got to do. Elvish Archroot is fine. I'm going to Wrath here. Pack me all you want. This is going to be so good. Wait, why are you not attacking with Druid? Yeah, swing all. You better tap out. You better tap out. All right, you're going to like this one, opponent. Come on, play something else. Play something else. I dare you. Oh, yes. Play another one. You got another one? Nope. All right. Wrath of Dog. Yeah, boy. You see me rarely do this in the channel. I am always the one who's playing the creature deck and getting five for one Wrath. And now I'm doing it to somebody else. It's very rare that you'll see me ever do this. But because, like, you know me. If you've been watching my YouTube channel for a long time, you know I'm an aggro player. So you never get to see me do this. And this is what it feels like. It's like, yes, we just did that. We are in the clear. Yo, Azuri, I don't care. Oh, and there's a Ballista. That's going to be so good. All right, but um, let's go build a Ruin, try to get rid of their white sources. Let's go Gids. Nerf Azuri. We're getting them. Come on, give me the sixth land. Come on, give me that sixth land. Give me that sixth land. Nope. All right, but I can still go. Oh, but they can regenerate their elf. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Path Azuri. Sure. Let's put a stop on their upkeep. That regeneration shield goes away as steps and phases end, right? Why is that regeneration shield still there? That regeneration shield should go away, right? All right, take the stop off of their upkeep. All right, go for it, opponent. You're in top deck mode now. I can just shoot whatever you play. Nice. All right, sweet. Field of Ruin. Let's get rid of that last pretty-looking white source over there. Get it out of here. Hello. Melkor, for the win. Do you play Merfolk? Sounds like you do. Jackal Shin, how's it going? Weren't you here the whole time? Oh yeah, they're scooping it up. Nice! That was great. Nice little fire for one into Ballista. Ballista's so good in this matchup. We're gonna mulligan this one. We're gonna keep that one. I hope we get Inquisitioned. <laughs> Um, I'm going to trust that we draw another land here, and I'll discard probably Amiria. Amiria is not active for a long time. Ooh, Basic Mountains, a good sign that we're going to, that our life gain is going to really hurt them. C 
Simeon Spirit Guide on my turn. Manamorphos, what is happening? Fry? What the heck? What is happening? I have no idea why. I'm not even going to finish that sentence. I'm not even going to finish that sentence because there's no reason to finish. I have no idea why, period. Why did they, on our turn, that means Spirit Guide, Metamorphose, and Mainboard Fry? Like, why Fry and why Mainboard Fry? Those are two questions that I have. Okay, Ranger Captain of Eos, that can go and grab a Martyr. It's Urza. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you better throw that away. All right, Ranger Captain of Eos. Ranger of Eos. Let's go get Sarah Ascendant and Sarah Ascendant. Ooh, another Martyr. Play a Martyr. Crack the Martyr, reveal six cards, gain 18 life. And play two 6-6 six, six flying lifelinkers for one mana. Get in. <laughs> I think that'll do it. So uh, this is obviously Mono Red Blitz. But with SSG and Fry. I don't know what is happening. But sure. Stopping in to say hello. What's up, Russ? How you doing today? I haven't, like, stopped by your stream in a while. It's like, I've seen you online, but I don't know. I just haven't clicked. I should click more, and I should stop by to say hello more. That's something I gotta do. It's just there's so much chaos. There's so much people online. There's so much things to do, and there's so much videos to edit that it's just I never do. All right, so against Mono Red Blitz, Ghostly Prison seems good. Uh, Rune Halo might be decent to name like Soul Scar Mage or whatever is attacking me. I can name like Eidolon if they have Eidolon, but with Simeon Spirit Guide and Manamorphose, I doubt they have Eidolon, but they could be doing that to play a turn one Eidolon, so I'm not sure. But what is not good here? Generous Gift is probably not safe here, so might as well bring in one Rune Halo. But do I want another one? I guess Crucible isn't good here, so I guess I'll bring in another one. And let us run it like that. Doing all right. Been playing some video games lately. Nice. You play some cool games. You, me and you have like the same video game taste. That's what's really cool. Um. Well, yeah, I'm not really one for new games. I'm more of a retro gamer. I like to go back and experience old nostalgic games. Like, a game I want to go back and play again is Super Mario Sunshine. I just gotta, like, find it online. I gotta buy it. I bet Super Mario Sunshine is so expensive, though. I bet that game's, like, $90, if I had to guess. I shouldn't have let go of all my old GameCube games. You added a wrinkle to the video games. You do exercises every time you die. So now you're punished for dying. You have to play good. All right, so let's um, Winds of Abandon on Megas so that we can have our colors back. We're ramping them, so hopefully they don't have another Megas. But now, since they are heavy on the Meguses, we know we need to get basic planes. We got to feel the ruin their Castle Emberth immediately. Risk Factor. Um... Have risk factor deal four mana damage to you? Yes. I will have risk factor deal four damage to you. Yeah, I wanna I wanna feel the ruin right now to prepare for a castle ember or prepare for another uh to prepare for another one of those uh Magus of the Moons, but then again I want a Ranger Captain of Eos for a martyr. I I think I'm gonna do that. So let's get out Field of Ruin, let's Ranger Captain of Eos and get a martyr.
see if they want to bolt my Ranger Captain Vios, and if they do that, then they can't play another another Megus. Yay! No, oh, four mana? Is it a Chandra? Are they gonna go Chandra Blast on my thing? Fry. Oh. Oh, you know what I should have done? I should have cracked it. Dang it. Um. Oh, another Ranger Captain of Eos. So I think I'm gonna go with Martyr. And then I'm just gonna play an Amiria and then pass and crack the Martyr. Um. No, 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 no. Play a Ghost Quarter so that I can field. Yeah, I'm gonna field of ruin. Wait, no, I'm gonna do that first. So they can't respond. Because if I were to crack the field of ruin and tap out, they could respond and bolt my martyr. So playing Resident Evil 5? Oh yeah, I saw you. I saw you playing Resident Evil 5. You did a push-up for every death, and in professional difficulty, Chevelle died a lot. Oh man, you literally did 50 push-ups during a three, uh, three hour stream. Yeah, Sheva dies a lot. You gotta keep her healed. I'ma fizzle that. We're getting skull cracked. Okay, Missville Plains, they're all tap lands. Let's go with Ranger Captain of Eos. Say yes, and let's go and get another martyr. And I'm not gonna play it yet because I don't th I don't want them to end up bolting it. So let's just keep up blocks again. I gotta draw some more white cards for martyr, anyways. Once I draw one more white card, then I get up to thirty, and then boom, future Ranger of Eos Eoses can go and get Sarah Ascendant. Gazelle over Hugh, thank you for the follow. How are you doing today? All right, play Amiria, play Martyr of Sands. Um All right, I guess I Do I stay back or do I go for it? I want to draw another white card. I want to draw one more white card. I want to get to 30. I want to get to 30 so that I can be in range for Sarah Ascendant. It's pretty greedy, I know. I know it's pretty greedy. But screw you. <laughs> We're doing this. We have a mission. I hear the neighbor singing. Parting despite corona. Alright, um... There we go. There's our card. So let's crack this uh martyr reveal four cards now we're up to 30 play ghostly prison so now monastery swift beard can attack us and let us rune halo on monastery swift beard just because Exiles Simeon Spirit Guide. Why do they keep doing Simeon Spirit Guide shenanigans on our turn? Dude. That making no sense. Alright, fine, you got me. I'll have Risk Factor deal 4 damage to me. Now when I name Monastery Swift Spear, I should have went to combat first. Now that when I name Monastery Swift Spear, I go to combat, they are going to just chump. I've never seen anybody use um, Simeon Spirit Guides on somebody else's turn, like, and then they just did it twice in this round. You like old school NES games? Yes, I do. I, uh, I played a lot of NES. That was my first console, was NES. Um, I, when, like, when I was a little kid and I first started playing video games, I was playing, um, Bubble Bobble, I was playing Metroid, I was playing, you know, Galaga and Super Mario Bros. 
All right, I mean, might as well crack this. I was playing so much NES games. Zelda. Duck Hunt. Bubble Bobble consumed many, many hours. That game went on for... Yeah, I I always... I would play it so many times every day trying to beat the whole game. Bubble Bobble was the, the S-H-I-T. Um, gonna save this rune Halo until I figure out what they're playing. I'm, I know for sure they're playing Soul Scar Mage, but I'm not gonna name... It doesn't have haste. I'm not gonna name it with rune Halo until I see it. Because they could also have Eidolon, but I doubt it with Manamorphose. Desperate Ritual. Okay, Martyr of... No. I'm not gonna play Martyr Sands until I can go over 30. Can't go over 30 yet. I can gain 6 life and go to 28. Alright, sure. Dude, risk factor me all you want. I don't care. Come on, give me a Ranger Vios. Sarah Ascendant. Okay, so I can gain... Uh, nine life and go to 27. That's not enough. I need one more white card. One more white card. Can you turn on the Healy? Oh, you're right. Can I turn on the Heliod? No, I'm one short. No, I can. I can turn on the Heliod. But now I'm at 30. So now we play Martyr Sands. Now we crack Martyr Sands, revealing... Or now we're at 30. Put a counter on himself. Now I can play another martyr. Bracket. One, two, three. Go to 39. Put a counter on himself. Play the Sarah. Go to combat. Get in for seven. Here we go. Oh yeah, I remember playing a lot of Contra back in the day, but I remember sucking really bad at it and could never get past like level two. But yeah, Contra. There, there's so many NES games I played. I, I probably played like a third of the games that exist. But then after that, moving on to Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo was probably the console I played most. I played so much Super Nintendo games. Super Mario World and um, what is that? Um, oh, I'm trying to remember. I just had it. Zombies Ate My Neighbors. That was some good times. You ever play Zombies Ate My Neighbors? As a burn player, this is where you just scoop. Yeah, I wonder what they're doing. They got Shadow Spear too. Like, what is their deck? I don't know what their deck is doing. But you know what? We'll take this win. We'll, we'll snag this W. Cathartic Reunion too? For nothing? Electro Dominance? Okay, their deck is doing something wild. And I don't know, but they obviously didn't do what they wanted to do. It feels like just a risk factor fiery temper deck because they want to discard fiery temper. Get that that trigger. They're gonna try and stab your Heliod ain't working. And death. GG. Got a game here against a zero trans fat, and yes, we're gonna be on the play with some Heliod Martyr proc in Pioneer and Modern and <laughs> Modern. That's gonna be a mulligan because we're stuck on one. That one looks a little bit better. Let's keep that one. I do need a second white source, but I can crack a field of ruin. So I think I'm gonna throw away. Dude, I think I might actually throw away Heliod for now. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that because. I have a Ranger of Eos to find the Ballista, but this was my first my first round um, queuing up with the deck for the day, so I didn't know what I'm doing. You can hear? What's up, Kyoji? 
Oh, Samurai Dancer is redeeming a fursona. All right. All right, Samurai Dancer. You will become a furry in no time. So I have to ask you a questionnaire. Are you... Are you more social or are you more shy? That's question number one for you. You are shy. All right. Are you outdoorsy or are you more of an indoor play video games kind of person? Or are you more of a hiking outside person? Outdoors? Okay. Um, I'm scooping. Are you more of a... Okay, I've seen what you look like. I've seen what you look like. You're like a... You're, you're a man with the... With, you, you know... You know... Let me see. Are you more into warm weather or cold weather? What do you like better? All right, um, let me see. What, what are we doing against Blue Moon? Against Blue Moon, we need some grinding control pieces. So, probably want Sorcerer Spyglass. I probably don't need Cleansing Nova and Wrath. I could probably use Sun Titan and Avacyn here. Got like one path. Do that. Um, cold weather. Okay. So cold weather, you're outdoorsy and you're shy instead of social. Are, do you, okay. In terms of video games, do you prefer more medieval games or do you prefer more modern shooting games like, like Call of Duty, like War, like Battlefield? Or do you like medieval, like Skyrim and, you know, Elder Scrolls? Modern for you? Oh no, I'm talking about Samurai Dancer. He's becoming a furry. Would you like to play first? Yes. Um, all right, let's keep that. D2? What does D2 mean? <laughs> Destiny 2. Okay, so that's kind of futuristic. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Are you are you more of a cat person or a dog person? And no, I'm not going to make you a canine or feline unless I'm really feeling that. This is just a personality test. You have owned more dogs than cats, but you currently own a sweet cat. Okay, so a little bit of both. Do you... What's your favorite color? What is your favorite color? All right, thing in the ice. Electric blue. I don't know what electric blue is. Probably a combination of yellow and blue. That gives me the sparky vibes. Let me see. So I'm going to go with... What am I doing here? Um, okay, I'm going to go Ghost Quarter and pass. Because if they Blood Moon, I'm going to Ghost Quarter Moon. Um, Alright, so... Next question is is let me see uh, okay so you're 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 not as social so you're you're more shy you're more introverted you are more of an outdoorsy person you like the color blue you're kind of mixed between dogs and cats you like more of the futuristic fps shooting games instead of the medieval stuff 
So I wouldn't label you as a dragon or scaly of any type. I would say... Um, ugh, this is a difficult one. I'm kind of seeing you as like... I don't know, I'm kind of feeling a... What what do you call what do you what is that kind of dog in uh Pokemon Sword and Shield that um what is the the uh, um electric dog? What what kind of a breed is he? I'm kind of feeling that kind of dog. Whatever that is. Yeah, what the thing that Yamper evolves into. What is Yamper what 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 kind of breed is is that sparky kind of dog? Cuz that's what I'm kind of feeling here. Um, let me see. I'm gonna go get in here. When did Marin become the quiz master? I'm trying to. I'm trying to turn Samurai Dancer into a furry. Okay. Okay. It's not gonna be a Doberman because you like blue. Uh, oh man, Boltund, yeah, but like, what kind of a breed is the Boltund? I'm kind of feeling Samurai Dancer more as a dog person than a cat person, because if Samurai Dancer was a was a cat, he'd be a lion, like for sure. Samurai Dancer would for sure be a lion, but lions are social. That's the problem, because Samurai Dancer is not very social, more shy. Are 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 lions shy? Because I have, I think that lions are pretty social. Um, all right, let's attempt to get out Gideon again. I'm gonna ghost quarter my own Blackstones, fight me <laughs> just because I I want more basic planes before they blood moon me. Akita, so what's uh, what's a non social kind of active cat? A cheetah, a jaguar. You are, but but who likes cold weather? Or don't cheetahs and jaguars live in hot weather, or like humid hot weather? You know, like the Amazon. So what's a what's a cat? What's a kind of cat that lives in a more cold place? That's that's not as that's more of a silent hunter. That's not very active. A bobcat, a mountain lion, or a bobcat. Snow, a saber tooth tiger. Perfect. You are a saber tooth tiger. That is what you are, Samurai Dancer. That fits so good. You are a saber tooth tiger. Yes, that is you. 100%. <laughs> you are a saber tooth tiger. But what is your persona name? What is your persona name? That's what we're trying to figure out. So, Samurai Dancer. So, okay, since you have Samurai in your name, um, you you could be like like. So you're an Anthro Saber Tooth Tiger, and you're like a Samurai. You got like a Samurai sword, and you know, like you got maybe maybe some kind of Samurai stuff going on. Kind of a ninja, kind of a ninja tiger. You're like a warrior tiger. You're like a warrior saber tooth tiger. The sword is the tooth. Oh yeah, you have like a tooth sword. <laughs> no, that'd be kind of weird. Okay, before I get snap bolted, I'm gonna have to make a Gideon emblem. Magmatic sinkhole is killing Gideon. All right. I need to gain some life. Amiria the Sky Ruin. All right, we're gonna play your Captain Vios. Wayward Sword Tooth. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Phil? No, I. 
Uh, Minimen, I don't think I would, I would label, label Samurai Dancer as a leopard. I think Sabertooth Tiger fits way better. Um, all right, so we're gonna grab probably a Sarah Ascendant. And we're gonna go with Ghost Quarter, Sarah Ascendant. I need to just connect once. I just need to connect one time with the Sarah Ascendant and get up to four life. Okay, that Vendillion click, I'm definitely going to have to, um, Generous Gift. What about Protogen? What is Protogen? Tooth and Sword? I swear telling the tooth and the tooth and the nothing but the tooth. But, um... Whatchamacallit, um, I've seen some, oh, that's GG by the way, over with that one, too much, too much tempos. Got a game here against Yaden, and we're going to be on the draw here with some Martyr proc, and that is going to be a keep. So I have a lot of stuff I can reveal to the Martyr here, and then I just hold off with Gideon and Generous Gift to the point I get out Ranger Captain of Eos to go and fetch the Sarah Ascendants. And there we go. Aaron Mesa, Mountain, Goblin Guide. Oh, there might be some hope. Their Ascendant is the reveal. All right, so I don't think that I want to play Sarah Ascendant yet, and I don't want to play Martyr yet because I don't want to have it killed before I can crack it. Eidolon. Oh boy, that's the nuts curve right there. All right, Martyr. So I can gain 15 life and hope that they don't have um, Skullcrack, but it doesn't look like they're Boros Burn. Looks like they're Mono Red. Okay, never mind. Giving me another free land. See if they got a skull crack. If they got a skull crack, we lose. If they don't got a skull crack, we are likely winning. Oh, we got to crack it. We're up to 29. We're down to 26. All right, so let's... um. Just play a planes and say go, I guess. And I'm gonna have to beast within um to surprise block the Eidolon. Oh, I have to discard a card. Alright, I guess I'm ditching a ghost quarter. But yeah, then Ranger Vios goes and gets another martyr. Then I get Sarah sending down. I got a Martyr of Sands on top. All right, Generous Gift, my Flagstones. Hopefully they don't have a Bolt. Do they really have a Searing Blaze? Don't tell me you got a Searing Blaze. Really? Perfect timing Searing Blaze? No way, dude. No way. All right, let's go get a Miss Veil Plains. We can still get out um, Ranger Captain of EO, a Ranger of EOS next turn and not take any pain from the Eidolon. And we can go and get another Martyr. All right, let's go get two more Martyrs. All right, Martyr, Martyr. That's a lot of Martyrs. We're going to gain so much life. I really wish we can find a way to deal with that Eidolon, though. And of course, they got a bolt to deal with that.
How do they still have so much stuff to do? Floral's charm. Are we dead actually? Do they really just have the nuts? Oh man, they just really had the absolute insane nuts. That is crazy. Wow, dude, really? We gained 15 life and that's the power of Goblin Guide into Eidolon. And they just had everything. Wow. That was nuts. That was absolutely nuts. But this is a really easy matchup. We should be good. That was an insane nut draw, but we were on the draw. You really want to win the win the, the die roll against Burn, so this is actually going to be hard. Being on the draw in game three is going to suck. Let's bring in Ruined Halos. Let's cut Cleansing Nova. And let's cut... Um, um, I don't know, Generous Gift? I like Generous Gift, though. I guess we're cutting Crucible. This is just Boros Burn, yes. That was some supreme nuts right there. That was the most supreme nuts I've ever seen. All right, let's keep that. It's a very slow hand, but... It has the potential to search out lots of martyrs. Many, many martyrs, but I also need to crack this field of ruin. All right, Monastery Swift Spear gets in for one. We'll take it. Saracen and go. Gotta gain little bits of life that we can. Don't have idle on turn two again, please. You were on the Saracen. At least that's not going to my face. So that's fine. Yay, I drew a source of mana. So let's go Ranger Captain of Eos. Let's go and get a Martyr. And pass a turn. Yeah, you better be stuck on one. That's what you get for getting the nuts on the first game. All right, nothing in passes. Field of Ruin number two. And uh, let's just go Ranger of Eos and fill up our hand because we're, no, we're in no danger right now. The Ranger of Eos is going to go and get another Martyr and a Sarah Ascendant. Let's get in there for three this time. Scoop time, yep. All right, but now, now they get to be on the play. And them being on the play is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. So let's see how this goes. I really hope I get Rune Halo in my opener to name Eidolon immediately if they got it. That's not bad. We got lots of removal for creatures. No turn one play. I like it. And there's the Rune Halo. All right, so if they have an Eidolon, I don't even care. Ooh, just bolts us? That's aggressive. I would have saved that. Um, okay, well, there's no point to even name Eidolon if they don't have it, but I feel like I should, like, rune Halo on something here. I should probably ruined Halo on Goblin Guide because that's the thing that can deal the most damage out of nowhere. What if I what if I ruined Halo on Boros Charm? 
Okay, let's get a vote going in chat. Do you think I should put it on Boros Charm or Goblin Guide? What do you think? It I mean, I have removal for Goblin Guides, but... Boros Charm? We got one for Boros Charm. Let's get one more vote going. Then give Double Strike. Skullcrack was your idea. Stops from gaining life. Um... Or what if I just don't even play it right now? Goblin, Eidolon? Okay, it's all mixed. We're just not going to play it. I'll, I'll play it later once I get more of an idea of what I want to do. Like, once they go to suspend a Rift Bolt, then I'll just do that. Lightning Helix. Okay, so it wasn't a Boros Charm. Amiria the Sky Ruin. Alright, well, let's get out. Or I'm just going to Generous Gift and my Flagstones here to start attacking. Boros Charm. Boros Charm. I knew it. They have so much stuff to do, too. You know what I should have done? I should have feel the ruin, ruin them. Okay, well, you know what I have to do is next turn I have to give lifelink to the elephant token. Do I really feel the ruin right now? I don't think I can really feel the ruin right now, because if they crack the Sunday Canyon in response, I lose my field of ruin. It fizzles. They get to draw a card, probably drawn to another white source anyways. Hmm. Okay, I think I have to go Heliod here. Oh, Heliod only needs five devotion, right? Oh, dude, we're so close. Watch should be another Boros charm. What's up, Moonlight Wolves? Another Boros charm! I knew it! I knew it! I knew I should have done it! I should have done it! I regret it. Okay, so here is what I'm going to do. Ranger Captain of Eos. Go and get... Oh, you know what? Let's just get a Martyr Sands, play it, and crack it. Thing is, I probably have to pass, though, because if they have a skull crack... Way to crack. Or they could have double bolt. Hold on. Hold on, stop. No! Oh yeah, I have to wait on this. I have to wait for the perfect moment. So here's what I have to do. I have to give lifelink to the elephant token. Oh yeah, I think I got them here. I think I got them. Go to combat. Swing with all. And also give lifelink to the ranger, Captain of Eos. And when they go to respond with the spell is when I crack the martyr. Did it connect? Oh, it connected. It's over. We won. There's no coming back. <laughs> yeah, we got them. We have got them. There, there's no chance anymore. <laughs> That's what you get. See, that was karma saying, saying your instincts knew the right thing to do. Your instincts knew to ruin Halo on Boros Charm and you got screwed for it. So in return, I'm going to let you have this one because you knew the right thing in your heart and you were going to do it, but you got swayed. So it's just like a lesson. Always trust your instincts. 
Hello everybody and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. We like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut for the videos, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there. Now this match we are going up against, or actually I forgot to mention, we're speeding up the next four rounds today. There was a lot to be sped up. There was even some that didn't even make it into the video altogether just because this deck grinds out super long. Martyr proc is one of the grindiest decks ever in modern. I think I said that in the intro of the video as well. It just, it takes so long to win sometimes, but it can get there if it sits there long enough. And this match was a good example. Uh, this was against blue, white, and merfolk. Uh, I was thinking, you know, usually back in the day, merfolk decks would run Wanderwine Hub and Seachrome Coast and Oboro and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Miko, not Miko Koro, the other blue legendary land just so that they don't get locked out by choke but that's not a thing nowadays but they were running those kinds of lands but it was actually for something because they had path to exile and um the unsettled mariner now this match was the longest one in the entire stream by far this was about like almost an hour long round like seriously this this match i was this was just stabilization dot game and all all this was was just me trying to hang on by a thread every single turn so i was constantly trying to just get above um a certain life threshold to turn on these sarah sentence but it was too difficult so i was just trying to live every every single second like this match like this match has been going on since i started commentating the speed up session till now and it's still going on a lot longer just because I, i'm trying to stabilize like crazy and they it's a very back and forth swingy game they keep tapping my stuff down and getting in for huge chunks of damage and then i keep proceeding to gain it all back this whole entire game this teferi time raveler has been the most annoying pest just constantly making me not be able to leave stuff up on their turn and constantly bouncing things i play but at least a couple times they bounce my ranger captain of eoses which allow me to go get more things so it's kind of like they get card advantage and tap me down but i get card advantage too now they have lethal on board um but i'm just trying to kill teferi so i finally attack and swing at teferi and get it off the table about dang time and so i had that martyr i'm able to block and sack and go back up to nine and at this point i'm i'm just trying to um catch them off guard with my generous gift so i'm i'm kind of like forcing them to get in here which then I generous gift my own flagstones and then I get a surprise blocker, which they knew about the generous gift. I just didn't think, they probably didn't know in their head that I was going to use it as a flash blocker. But I've been doing that all day long, is using generous gift to blow up my own flagstones of Trocare just to get a surprise blocker. I did that against Burn and I did that against Merfolk. And so we ended up grinding out with that Gideon and clawing our way back into that game and that alone was like a 40 minute game <laughs> like that that game took forever but it was the most comeback game it was one of the most comeback games i've ever had like we were it was such a swinging game very back and forth it's like they were just like tapping me down and swinging in for massive chunks of damage i would gain it back and eventually stabilized all it took was getting that dang pesky teferi off the table because that card is an absolute pest uh but going on to the next game they get stuck on two mana for a while. I do path them, which I probably shouldn't have because it ramped them. Um, but I was able to um, get the Sarah Ascendant down and be over at 32 life so that it's a 6-6 six, six flyer. But they're able to make it lose its abilities with Merfolk Trickster and, and kill it. Um, but it's alright because I have a Ranger Captain of Eos, a Ranger of Eos to get more Sarah Ascendants. Um, now, my plan with this game... I really don't know what my plan with this game was. But I think my plan was to just get a bunch of Sarah Ascendants back. Um, but also I, I really didn't know how to sequence this. So what my plan here was to take up the blast zone to two and then crack it. And they they use their own Teferi to bounce their own two drop because they see that I had blast zone and I was going to use it. And I really was confused as to what I was supposed to do here. And I was even saying YouTube's going to judge me on this play, but I ended up cracking the blast zone when I could have played double ghostly prison, but I stand by my play. It's weird. I know, but it ended up working out. Um, the opponent, as you can see, this, is, this game's been going on so long, they're close to timing out, but they end up scooping it up after I get too much on board because they know what's in my hand, I revealed it to the Martyr, and they know that they're not going to beat what I got. So we, they scooped that one up and we took down Merfolk. Sorry, Nikachu. Uh, <laughs> Bruce strike again. So we go on to the next match, and this was against um, 
Naya planeswalkers with the R. Ralph Utopia Sprawl ramp, and they got R. Ralph Utopia Sprawl like they always do, so they can turn two, drop a floor drop, and they drop the turn two Chandra. And then turn two Chandra into triple. They get actually triple season Pyromancer. <laughs> like, what the heck? How am I supposed to deal with that? Turn two Chandra into turn three season Pyro, turn four Chandra, turn five season Pyro, season Pyro. That is way too much season Pyros and Chandras. And being on the draw, especially to all that BS, I'm not going to deal with it. It's it's crazy. Um, but yeah, going on to the next game. Um, it looks like this hand is pretty solid. I'll, my plan is to just go and grab the Martyr and get above 32 life. But then they play the Chandra again. And this Chandra is so difficult to deal with. It's, it's really difficult for this deck to deal with Planeswalkers. We do have Generous Gifts, but then that like puts us in a racing situation. And like... What, right there, I think I was able to kill Chandra. They have a second one or something like that. I don't know. But then they even have Nahiri. And Nahiri, as you know, picks up to get an Emrakul in two turns. And so that's really fast, especially for a deck that doesn't generate to the board quickly and doesn't deal with Planeswalkers aside from Generous Gift. And we most of our curve is at the three drop slot. Basically, all of our curve is at the three drop slot. And so it's just very difficult to like get enough aggression on board to deal with walkers, especially when they get multiple blockers off of double season pyro yet again, drawing a bunch of cards and they just, they slam Chandra Awakened Inferno, it's just that's over. I think a deck that ramps into beefy planeswalkers very quickly is a deck that we can't really deal with because that, that's like the perfect counter to what we're trying to do. Uh, we're going on to the next one. And this was against Burn again. And I know I don't like to put duplicate matchups in the videos, um, but I just wanted to go ahead and throw it out there that I, like, over the past two months, like, I have not ran into Burn in Modern at all. And then as soon as we queue up a life gain deck, we go up against Burn twice. And that is so weird, but that's just how Magic the Gathering works sometimes. It's like, we never fight Burn. And then it's like, oh, your Magic Online now senses that you have life gain cards or cards in your deck that have the text that says gain life. And it's like, oh, we're going to give you these burn players. It's like, it's like not RNG. It's like it's meant to be. I don't know how it happens. It's, it's like kind of like a Magic the Gathering online conspiracy theory where it's like when, whenever somebody thought seizes you, you always top deck the same copy of the card that they thought seized. Like... For example, they thought sees your goif, you're going to top deck a goif. That's just that's just how some things work. It's like the scry bug might not even be a thing. It might just be uh, some kind of conspiracy. It's it's weird. But uh, going on to the next game, I, I didn't even get to commentate that first one. But you can already know you already know how these burn matchups go. It's like crack a martyr, gain a billion. There's nothing they can do. Oh yeah, that that first match that was such a sweet game, and I, I didn't even commentate it. But what ended up happening is I crucible ghost quarter lock them. I completely started strip mining their lands because they only have like three mountains in their deck, and I blew up all their white sources. So I just started ponzing them to death. And so now in game two, they brought in uh, rest in peace because they thought I was actually a crucible strip mine deck. And um, I wasn't, I ended up, uh, it, I ended up cutting the Crucible actually to bring in some sideboard stuff. Like even though Crucible did some awesome, super cool work in that first game, I cut it in game two just because it's not meant to be used against Burn really. I mean, it is a fine card against Burn. You've heard me say a lot on the channel that I believe that land destruction is really good against, um, really good against Burn. And if you have a deck that's running Fulminator Mage in the sideboard, I would even bring it in against Burn because blowing up their, because they don't have any basic planes. You you Ghost Quarter or blow up their white source, you're screwing them out of that white source. <laughs> and so uh, going on to the last round of the video, this is against Mono Green Devotion. And I'm loving this a lot because uh, as you might know, if you've been hanging around the YouTube channel for a while, at least more than like a year, uh, you would know that my favorite modern archetype is actually Mono Green Devotion. So no matter how you build Mono Green Devotion, it's just going to be so solid. It's a deck that I trust, and uh, it's it would probably be my go-to modern deck if it was in Celestia mid-range. So uh, game number three, this one was pretty uh, wacky. Oh no, this is game number two, isn't it? Or this might this might have been game number three. No, this was game number two. This game I I completely got destroyed because I got mana screwed. They they ended up acidic slamming. They got turn two Garrick and acidic slam and all that devotion. They got the nut draw basically and they blew up my land. Um, so game number three. This one was a little bit salty, but not salty at the same time because it's mono green devotion, my favorite deck. 
Um, and the reason they play um, the, the red source is because they have Primeval Titan to get Kessig Wolfriend and a red source. Um, but yeah, this game, they had the Cloudstone Curio, which I didn't know what that was there for. Maybe just ETB triggers with Hornet Queen. But um, they... Like, I, they play a Courser, so I'm like, I can Cleansing Nova to destroy all enchantments and artifacts to blow up Class on Curio and Courser. And so I do that just to get rid of Class on Curio, and the very next turn they have a Hornet Queen. So it was like, perfect timing. I did not know that was going to be there. I would have saved the Cleansing Nova, and they Crater Hoof us, and then we explode. But cool that we're playing against Monogreen Devotion. Good to see that deck nowadays. So we ended up with five total wins, and this deck has a real learning curve, I gotta say. So I have always played Soul Sisters throughout my life of playing Magic. Always been in Soul Sisters, but never done Martyr Proc. Like, I've I've done Martyr decks before. Like, way back in the day, I would use Martyr Sands with Squadron Hawk to fill your hand up and then crack it to, like, get enough life for Saracen in. But this is completely different. And this was something that I haven't done in a long time and I've never done with Proclamation of Rebirth. So... I was actually disappointed because we never even got to ever play Proclamation of Rebirth. Like, I don't know how this deck even 5 0 a league with Proclamation of Rebirth because we've never even casted it. Not once. Not once in the entire stream. And yeah, we didn't even cast it. It's like we never found the opportunity to do so because, like, if we get, we're, we never get up to six mana, first of all. We never get up to six mana because we have so much tech like Field of Ruin, Blast Zone, Ghost Quarter, and I find myself wanting to actually use these lands. And so I never get the opportunity to get up to six mana because the lands are so good, especially with Crucible. Like, I'd honestly want to cut the proclamations for more Crucibles and just be like a, you know, like a value -y, stall out, destroy your lands deck. And um, that could be pretty good. Obviously, that doesn't have decent synergy with like Path to Exile and Winds of Abandon. So this deck is kind of like, it's synergistic, but at the same time, it's not. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, the the board wipes are pretty good. One time, the, the Wrath of God was super clutch, and I like having the access to them in the main board, especially against the aggro decks, but I don't know. It just feels like the deck is very slow for the format. Like, look at the curve. The curve is, like, disgusting. <laughs> like, it's just a little, like, a good amount of one drops, a tiny bit of two drops, and then a ton of three drops. Like, there's some really powerful decks that have a lot of the three-drop curve, because three is, three is, like, the most powerful curve in modern. But you need to have a lot of good stuff to do in the early turns. But the thing is, Sarah Ascendant is not as good on turn one. I like to hold on to it for when I get the Martyr and I'm able to play it and crack it and reveal everything, and then I play the Sarah. So it's like we only really have four one-drops. Because the pads you're not going to play on turn one. So... Yeah, it just feels like the deck's curve is very awkward. I feel like that's something that can be worked on. And uh, I think the deck has a little bit too much removal. Like, Gideon is fine. Gideon is totally fine, but he didn't do anything in this deck that was, like, super impressive. So there's a lot in this deck that can be cut out, substituted for other things. You can try a whole bunch of things, this and this and that. Like, Soul Sister slash Martyr Proc has a maybe board that goes on super long there's a lot you can try and honestly when i'm playing martyr sands i love squadron hawk squadron hawk is definitely something i would play i would want to try out someday like a martyr proc a legion conquistador a uh, squadron like yeah that kind of deck with the oketra's monument just mono white that'd be pretty fun um and then just also still have ranger captain of eos and ranger of eos those were honestly the two best cards of the deck it felt like every single opening hand i just i wanted one of these on curve especially ranger of eos it's just like it's the most relevant for like what you want to do with the martyrs um but yeah starting off in the stream i had no idea how to play this and then as it went on it started to click more and more so it definitely has a learning curve to it um but it's it's a lot of fun when you get to know how to play it and uh, my favorite part is just the Crucible. The Crucible goes quarter locks. It was so much fun doing that against Burn. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button down below if you did. And subscribe if you're new for the spiciest of gameplay every other day. Uh, remember, the um, the link to the Discord, the new Discord, is down below. Uh, let me, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want to see on the channel, especially with Aquaria coming up. If you got any ideas, feel free to drop them in the Discord or drop them in the comments, whatever you want to do. 
And if you want to pick up today's deck in uh, Magic Online, consider signing up with Mana Traders in the link down below using the code Marin Moon to save 15% off. And you can rent today's deck as well as any future decks we play on the channel. If you wanted to buy this deck in paper, consider purchasing through our deck list link down below. That is our TCGplayer.com affiliate link. And anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. So thank you to all the sponsors, the patrons, and the Twitch chat. And we're going to get on out of here. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.